Hello everyone, this is uh, Kratom Cafe with another extremely educational video about Kratom. Um, we're going to be talking today about the fundamental difference between Kratom and regular opiates and synthetic opioids. So as everyone knows, there's like morphine and heroin and oxycontin and Vicodin and all that stuff. And that's like painkillers that are either prescribed or illegal on the street that are opiates that are like very infamous for being highly addictive and dangerous. And um, Kratom has a fundamentally different um, molecular and pharmacokinetic structure than those things. Even though Kratom has similar effects, Kratom does have opioid painkilling effects. It does act activate the opioid receptors. And people say, oh, it activates the same receptors, the mu opioid receptor as morphine. So therefore, you know, it's addictive and dangerous. And that's exactly what the FDA and um, Big Pharma have been trying to say. They're like, oh, it's an opioid. And therefore, and then they just copy and paste the dangers of like, the stuff they sell, which is like oxycodone and Vicodin. But there's a huge scientific difference, and we're gonna be talking about that today, and this scientific difference translates into very significant effects differences and very big differences in how Kratom affects people than these addictive opiates that have scourged the nation. I haven't looked recently, but like, there's been like just a tremendous amount of overdose deaths um, and such due to actual opiates, but Kratom, there's never been an overdose death in history. Um, it is technically possible to overdose on Kratom, but that would just consist of like nausea and maybe puking and feeling dizzy and maybe some blurred vision, but it would never, it never has ever gotten to the point someone has died, thankfully, from Kratom. And that's also part of what we're talking about today. So the key difference, to just throw out a scientific term, is that Kratom does not uh, recruit beta arrestin. So basically, um, let's go to our first chart, and we're gonna go into this really awesome scientific study that just has like everything about all of this, and it's um, metragenine as opioid analgesics and mu agonism and delta antagonism, which do not recruit beta arrestin two, and it talks about everything as to why kratom is different than um, opiates. And to be clear, this is a scientific study. Um, let's see. If where is it from? It's from like all sorts of different scientific institutions around the world. And they were not just trying to prove Kratom is like safe or something. They were literally just studying it. And this is what they found objectively without any pre-hatched conclusion. They're not being paid by Kratom, obviously. Like there's no one paying scientists to uh, prove Kratom. I mean, there is on a small scale at the University of Florida, but not like this. This was not a paid for study by any Kratom organization. They were just objective scientists and they found that Kratom was way safer empirically. So, all right, so here's first the chart. Um, here's metragyny, pseudo, and doxo, and you can just substitute this for metragyny or 7 hydroxy metragyny. It's like the main alkaloids of Kratom. They, yeah, they interact with the mu opioid receptor, their mu opioid agonist, and also a delta opioid agonist. But the difference is they have a G protein bias, and I'm not going to go into what all that means, but basically they just, even though they interact with the opioid receptor and produce nice pain-killing, euphoric, and stress-relieving effects, um, the Kratom alkaloids, it does not cause the same level or any near level of addiction and tolerance and withdrawal. And um, so yeah, to go into this, let's just look at some of the charts from the same scientific study. Um, so one of the key things we just talked about is overdose deaths. So basically um, when beta arrestin is recruited by like heroin or morphine, and here's the actual study, here's morphine, it causes massive respiratory depression. Um, so you see these green lines, this is a, uh, morphine at different dosages and it's causing like a respiratory suppression of like 50% or 75% so it's causing a massive decrease in lung functioning and then if someone takes too much morphine that goes down to 0% and which means 100% suppression and then they stop breathing and die god forbid and then here is the kratom alkaloids up here orange and red like basically it's almost no respiratory suppression and because so basically because of this lack of beta arrest and recruitment by the kratom alkaloids, it does not cause someone to stop breathing. And indeed, in my experience, um, even on very high doses of kratom, it does not slow down my breathing in any way. It's totally different than opiates like Vicodin, which like will, you'll noticeably, like people that take that will notice like their breathing has slowed massively, even at um, therapeutic dose. Therapeutic means like as prescribed just for the pain not to get high. So yeah, that, that's a huge difference right there. And that's because of this beta arrest and um, not being recruited by kratom alkaloids. All right, and um, this beta arrestin affects a lot of other things too. 
So because Beta Reston is not recruited as much, so when Beta Reston is recruited all the way, like we see here is a chart of tolerance, and this is showing basically anti no susception. That's like pain killing effects. And so let's get that thing out of the way. So on day one, um, on this chart, this is like day one going to 30 days. On day one, here's morphine. Yeah, it's like 100% pain relief. But then as the days goes on to like day five, it stops working. And that's what people notice with um, morphine and the other opiates is like they could take it. At first, it's amazing. All their pain is gone. And then it stops working. And they'll take more and more and more, higher and higher doses. And it gets to the point they could take like as much, like handfuls of the stuff, and they're not going to feel pain relief. So that's a huge problem with opiates, and that's because of the beta arrest and recruitment also, because it just so fully activates the opiate receptor that it just like desensitizes it and stops working. But then here's kratom, um, one of the alkaloids of kratom. Yeah, there is some tolerance built up, but it's only partial tolerance, even out to 30 days. And I can attest as a kratom user for over 12 years, the tolerance like stops, it just doesn't build up anymore long-term. Um, like I could take kratom every day and I do, and it, um, still has the same awesome pain relieving and stress relieving effects because it doesn't totally wreck the opioid receptors so basically with kratom there's a partial tolerance buildup, and then it stops building up completely um and it'll just keep working long term as usual like the, at the beginning it does work stronger that's for sure so this is showing yeah there is some tolerance buildup as you get used to kratom for the first couple weeks and that's totally true even like the first month like at first kratom works like way too strong sometimes if you take too high of a dose but then later on, you can take that same high dose and it'll just give you a very nice effect, all the good effects without like being too much. So yeah, there's a partial tolerance buildup of Kratom, but it does not build up all the way like morphine and the other opiates where just like the tolerance builds up so hard it stops working. There's like no good effects anymore. And then in the same um, arena as that, there's um, basically, all right, so here's like withdrawal and here's like morphine. Like there's a huge, huge withdrawal. And then with Kratom, uh, alkaloids, there's barely any, you know, it's like a very, very slight, yeah, there is a slight withdrawal from Kratom. It's kind of like quitting coffee. It's like, almost, it's like incomparable to opiate withdrawal. And I could say that for a fact from personal experience. Um, yeah, so like opiate withdrawal causes a massive shock to the body and extreme agitation because basically, um, when people are taking the opiates like morphine and heroin, it blocks, um, there are adrenaline receptors basically so like the adrenaline stops pumping and the body gets used to that and then when they quit the heroin or vicodin or whatever the adrenaline surges back like really massively and it's like a massive horrible adrenaline rush that causes massive agitation sweating cramps horrible gastrointestinal effects like shaking like because there's so much adrenaline surging through someone's body when they quit opiates and that has to do with the beta arrestin um and yeah that's what it all ties into so basically um when opiates recruit the beta arrestin, it suppresses the adrenaline. And um, that's actually what leads to the respiratory suppression and overdose deaths. But Kratom does not recruit the beta arrestin, and therefore the adrenaline is not suppressed. And therefore there's not a uh, respiratory effects that are significant. So there's no overdoses from that. Plus, since the adrenaline is not suppressed when people quit Kratom, there's not this horrible surge of adrenaline that causes withdrawal. So it all ties in together with this beta arrestin recruitment and the adrenaline cycle um, basically, so basic kratom does not mess with the adrenaline too much. It's just very little and almost nothing compared to opiates. And that's the big difference. And then, um, let's get into some other charts here. What else do we have? Well, I mean, actually that's basically it. And also I guess there's one final chart I wanted to point out. Like this study also like tested, um, like the pain relieving antinisoception, the pain relieving qualities of kratom versus morphine. And they found that Kratom worked way better than morphine, um, which is really surprising. So yeah, it's this chart. They, it was like a one and a half to three times more pain relieving effects in this study um, than morphine. Of course, this is with mice, but like, you know, the general trends are obvious and people have reported this. Um, like there's a book out there that has over a thousand real life stories of, you know, people that use Kratom and save their life and such. And they will say they were on like the highest dose of Oxycontin with like Vicodin and fentanyl patches and all that. There's all these stories out there and it like wasn't working for their pain, but then they took Kratom and it was. And this has to do with it. So basically Kratom has better pain relieving effects than the synthetic opioids and opiates. And simultaneously, um, it doesn't suppress the lungs. It doesn't cause a horrible surge of adrenaline when it's like stopped. It doesn't cause those horrible withdrawal effects. 
it all ties into this beta arrestant thing. So basically, kratom is like a miracle. It has like all the benefits of like an opioid without the horrible side effects and addiction. And addiction is another topic. Like part of that does have to do with the fit, like withdrawals. You know, part of the opiate addiction cycle is definitely, um, you know, like the withdrawal is so bad that people will keep using opiates just to feel normal. So this does tie in with addiction somewhat, but there's a whole nother thing um, to talk about. That'll be another episode where basically there's like this mesolimbic pathway in the brain, the reward pathway, like the thing that activates when people eat like chocolate or um, they do good at work or they have good relationships and good stuff is going on. Like it'll, it'll activate and release like endorphins in their brain. And the opiates hijack that, like cocaine hijacks that, and kratom does not. And that's a whole nother study and topic to talk about with addiction. But yeah, just to summarize, basically kratom has a, you know, it activates the opioid receptors, but it has a G protein bias, and it doesn't recruit the beta arrestin 2. And since it doesn't recruit the beta arrestin 2, uh, it doesn't suppress the adrenaline, the norepinephrine in the body. And since it doesn't suppress the norepinephrine in the body, it does not um, cause this respiratory suppression that is deadly with opiates. And it does not have a huge tolerance buildup. In fact, tolerance never builds up all the way, and it does not have a terrible physical withdrawal. So that's what I want to talk about, Kratom's fundamental scientific difference and the reason why it is essentially safe and it's like a miracle, it has all the good effects with like none of the bad. There are, it, you know, like I said, there's a little bit of Kratom addiction, it's kind of like quitting coffee, but it's really nothing compared to opiates. And anyone who claims that Kratom addiction is as bad as opiate addiction, they've never been on opiates, they don't know what they're talking about, they're probably just being OCD and um, they want to believe they're addicted to something, basically. Like, I don't believe anyone that says Kratom is, like, seriously addictive. It's not. It's just, like, a psychological situation with whatever person is saying that. Um, and they would probably say the same thing about coffee, you know, and they probably do. So, yeah, that's what I had to talk about today. Like and subscribe. Um, I'm going to keep talking about all the scientific topics involving Kratom, and we're also going to go into real-life stories about how Kratom saves lives. And we're basically going to cover all aspects of Kratom on this channel. Like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.